So maybe we could just start by praying. Gosh, do we need prayer? Always, <laughs> right? Morning and evening and noon will I pray, and I know you will hear my voice. That's what the Word of God says. Um, so here we are. Father, I thank you for this opportunity Thank you for this moment in time, but more than this, I thank you that you transcend time, you transcend the airways, you are a supernatural God, and we ask and invite you, we ask for your presence, we invite you in what we're doing today, we invite you to speak through us and to the people who are listening, I know you will speak to your people, I know you will be present right where they are. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're about to do, what you want to deliver, how you want to heal the hearts and heal people today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well. What you got? What do I got? <laughs> oh my God, I've been two you're the weeks. teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you have some things that, of course, in our oh, times yeah. together, yeah. when we're talking to the Lord and praying and you got some things that burn in your heart. You haven't seen that yet, but you will soon. <laughs> I'm sure. We have a subject that um, is related to inner healing and deliverance. Or how is it related? And go ahead and I'll leave you to <laughs> well, it. Well, we'll try to tie it in. But uh, I'm going to talk about the certain aspects of the kingdom today. Mm. And so uh, taking a look at that and, and seeing some things maybe we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I want you to start first. Okay. Just, you know, what God put on your heart, on your mind this week. Yeah. We talked about that already. And okay. we'll, we'll, we'll weave this into what mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's going to do today. Okay. Um, well, related to the subject of the kingdom of God and what the kingdom is, which is um, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit— um, I'm just so excited every time we have a, an opportunity to sit with someone, uh, Pastor Kimo with the, the man and me with the ladies, because I can see, we both can see as facilitators of this ministry, we can see the kingdom coming upon the person in Amen. front of us, invaded, invading their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And where there is darkness... He brings us light. Where there are lies, he brings us truth. Where there's pain, he brings his healing balm. Where there is brokenness, he puts us back together, literally. Uh, where there's anger and, and, and just a lot of animosity, he diffuses and brings in the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Um, so for me, the kingdom is something that can be seen, tasted, taste and see the Lord is good. It can be apprehended. It can come to you in a greater measure. Even though you have been saved, you have been born again, there are just um, a lot more to be apprehended in your journey, in your following of Jesus Christ. So this is what we experience, and there is... Also, this word I'm going to throw, there's also an inheritance that we must tap into. There's an inheritance that is not tapped into if we are stuck, if we are uh, hindered, if we're blocked, if the river uh, of in, in, our, in our life, if our river is blocked by boulders, then and there is nowhere to go and there's... Um, Places that need to be addressed in order for us to tap into that inheritance mm -hmm. in the saints, right? Yeah. Inheritance yeah. right here on the earth, not when we die and go by and by, but right here, right now, there's an inheritance from the kingdom. You said you didn't read my notes. I didn't. <laughs> am I am I on <laughs> on track? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you want, I can begin that, but I still want to hear about some of the thoughts and ideas mm -hmm. that are bubbling in your head uh, after reading that wonderful book? Oh, yeah. Wow. So. Well, a wonderful book. I think I'll uh, I'll talk about that. I, I'm going to um, let you know about this book. It's called Moving from Sword to Scepter, 
by uh, Wanda Alger, <coughs> A-L-G-E-R. And I just finished reading it. It's really a, a book on intercession, but in a different perspective. It's from the perspective of the kingdom. <laughs> Here we go again. Yes. It's from the perspective of heaven. And in the gist, it says really that uh, for a long, long time, we have been fighting. We have been wielding our swords and we've been just fighting and binding and doing all the uh, the work of a warrior. And uh, Wanda Alger just really makes a... Uh, a great move from sword to scepter, which is the place of authority, the place where the kingdom calls us. Seated at the right hand of uh, Jesus Christ, he has made a room for us to sit with him and to look at the kingdoms of this world and to look at things on earth from his perspective. So I don't want to say too much about this book, but I re highly recommend this book, and I'll, I'll type the title and the author's name later. Yep. But that talks about the kingdom again, and that's yep. what the subject is, all right? Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the kingdom, um, just coming from the, the present aspect of the kingdom, not a future aspect or eschatology. We're going to stick in this end days period right now. But, mm -hmm. you know, the kingdom of God is, is overarching and encompasses everything and, in fact, is the bullseye. If you have a a bow and arrow, and you're going to aim it to your target, which should be the bullseye. Mm. The bullseye is the kingdom. Everything else is subservient to that. Healing, deliverance, um, all the things that we do uh, are really uh, part of the kingdom. And that's why the church can't be preaching the church. We need to be preaching the kingdom. Amen. And the kingdom is, again, as Natalie was saying, is the foundation of everything we do, and it's the foundation of inner healing. Because if you will, the kingdom is the domain of the king. And the Amen. domain is where he's ruling. And so God wants to rule our hearts. Of course, he rules it in love, mm -hmm. but he wants the kingdom of God to come into our hearts and come into our lives and rule Amen. in love. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's, let's, um, we'll start out off by a negative and then we'll just keep going down the, the positive because we got to tell the whole truth, right? <laughs> Nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yeah. So mm -hmm. here's a parable that Jesus spoke to the Sadducees and the Pharisees as a rebuke to them, but um, there's some interesting nuggets in here. It's, it's Matthew 21, 33 to 46. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus says, um, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and rented it out to the vine, vine growers and went on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. The vine growers took his slaves, beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Again, he sent another group of slaves larger than the first, and they did the same thing to them. But afterwards, he sent his son to them, saying, they will, they will surely respect my son. But when the vine growers saw the son, they said amongst themselves, this is the heir. You, you mentioned the word inheritance. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. They took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? <clears throat> they said to him, we, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at the proper seasons. Jesus said to them, did you never read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, this became the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. This came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And now the line, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. Mm. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whoever it falls will be scattered like the dust. Everybody say, ouch. Uh, the ouch. kingdom of God was taken Wow. Because they would not produce its fruit. And that is a challenge for us that because the kingdom of God is central, that we enter the kingdom and where our purpose is to bear fruit for the king, Amen. to bring glory and honor to the king. Amen. <clears throat> and it says finally there, verse 45, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about them. When they sought to seize him, they feared the people because they considered him to be a prophet. They didn't even recognize that he was the Messiah. 
So as I said before, the kingdom of God is the centerpiece of revelation and of truth found in the scriptures. It is the bullseye of the target we should all be looking for. We should be building the kingdom of God in every place that that we are to be found. And bear the fruit of it, right? And bear the fruit. The bear of the fruit of the kingdom, yes. Mm-hmm. Carry the fruit, all right? I'll take this. Thank you. That being true, we know that the kingdom was given to the church for us to produce its fruit. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Mm-hmm. That's a very familiar scripture. It's interesting. That it says something five times in a row before that, in that very same passage. It says, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny that that kind of tells us a barometer for us. Where, how far are we in the kingdom? How much anxiety is in our life? We should have very little fear because perfect fear, 1 John 4, drives out all fear. Perfect love, sorry, drives out all fear. Mm -hmm. And it also says two other things that we're to seek. One, we're to seek his righteousness, and two, we are to seek the kingdom. Okay. Okay? And when it says his righteousness there, (coughs) man, it's not talking just about the righteousness that Jesus gave us, but it's also talking about the righteousness of holy living, Mm. that we are to seek that and pursue that, Mm -hmm. okay? So the second thing he wants us to do is to seek the kingdom of God. And so we're going to look at this kingdom, and we're going to look at inheritance a little bit, okay? (coughs) Maybe a little water. Yep, a little water. Mm -hmm. Well, if I can interject there. Absolutely. I was... We're talking about the five times that Jesus said, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry, which precedes his Seek first the kingdom. His conversation about the, the, the kingdom, pinpoint of the kingdom. There's a scripture that comes back to me, and it's um, the anger of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. And here we go again. That's an emotion, and it's a strong emotion, you know, how worry, anxiety, fear, anger can be really, really strong and can be uh, misleading, really, just motivating us and pushing us in certain behaviors. Um, But again, it's all tapping into the kingdom. It's something we carry, something that is available to us. It's something that feels like something, right? The Mm -hmm. kingdom is where the king is, there is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit again. All right, so let's look at this kingdom thing here, an inheritance thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to Galatians 5, 16 to 21, and we're going to read that. So Galatians 5, starting at verse 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. But if if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are obvious or evident, which is immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, torture, dissensions, factions, drunkenness, grossing, etc., etc., etc. And then it says something here. And things like these of which I forewarn you, just as, as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is not a one-time event. This, this verb in the Greek means to habitually do something or to live that way. And what it's saying is if you live that way, you will not inherit the kingdom. Hmm. Hmm. So let's, let me pull out two nuggets here, okay? One, <clears throat> one, it says, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. What it doesn't say is don't carry out the desires of the flesh and then you'll walk in the Spirit. Hmm. Okay? Those are two different things. The second one is religion. The first one's Christianity. We walk by the Spirit, The Spirit empowers us, and we do not fulfill the desires of the flesh because we walk by the Spirit. The other way is works. I'll do it myself. I'll attain my own righteousness. I'll be good. I won't do this. I won't do that. And therefore, I'll be walking in the Spirit. That's that's two different worlds. Two different worlds. Two different worlds. One is being a son and a daughter, led by the Spirit, getting to know the voice of God, right? And the other one is I'm putting my bootstraps, I'm pulling on them, and I'm trying to perform for daddy. It's two different worlds and two different 
um, production, two different harvest, I would say. Amen. Amen. The Amen. interesting part about this, the second nugget is it said, they, they will not inherit the mm. kingdom. Hmm. We'll get to that in a second. Look at John 3, verses 3 through 5. Jesus answered and said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter, enter. the kingdom. And, you know, we have made born again the central topic of these two verses, and it's actually not what's central here is the kingdom. Mm -hmm. In other words, in other words, to see the kingdom, you have to be born again. Must. To enter the kingdom, right. you must be born First. again. Yeah. Okay? It didn't say inherit here, mm. did it? Hmm. Okay. So in Galatians 5, verse 21, which I read before, walk, started walking by the Spirit, and you notice that the kingdom is inherited. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Is sal salvation something that's inherited? Is born again inherited? No. Isn't it a free gift given to us by faith through, mm -hmm. through grace? Mm -hmm. Isn't salvation a free gift? Mm -hmm. This is true. Salvation is a free gift. But the kingdom of God is inherited. Mm -hmm. hmm. When do I get it? Uh -huh. Good question. <laughs> I'm, I'm being the... One of the two brothers, can I have my inheritance now? <laughs> right now. Almost there. So, so okay. when you were born again, you can see and enter the kingdom. But inheritance is for sons and daughters, not babies. Okay. So we have a wealthy man, and he's the father. And he has a son. And he has a, a wonderful business that his son will inherit. I'm going to steal a little bit on the bottom of that. Mm. When does that son get control of that business and it becomes his business? When he's born, a little baby or a little toddler, mm -hmm. when is the kingdom his? When is daddy's business his? Hmm. Not when he's a baby. No, I wouldn't hand over to Emma certain things right now, my bank account especially. Uh, that wouldn't work. Right. <laughs> so what I'm saying is just because we're born again doesn't automatically mean we are walking in the kingdom. Oh. It means we can see it. Okay. It means that we have entered it, mm -hmm. but I would say only as one stepping into the doorway of the kingdom. We're not actually walking in it. So normally speaking, when does a son inherit his father's business? When they're babies or when they are older? Mm -hmm. When they're older. Right. Hmm. It implies maturity. Mm -hmm. A certain time that's passed where... Uh, the child has grown, of course, but probably proven that they are proven. going to not waste uh, the business and they have um, been responsible, I suppose. Yes. They can be trusted. It right? is a matured, grown-up son who has worked the business from the bottom up with his father, mentoring him along the way and mm -hmm. teaching him everything he knows mm -hmm. that is finally handed to the business over to him and then the father retires in the natural world. Mm hmm so inheritance is for sons and daughters. Yeah. In other words, God is saying, I want to give you a greater measure of the kingdom, but you need to grow up. Mm. Okay? That's what it's saying. And this is how it ties into inner healing, because inner healing grows us up. Amen. We get the lies broken and the, and, the, and, the, and the consequences thereof. It frees our hearts up to receive more of God and give that give and take time of intimacy and revelation and maturity and understanding to really take place. And that's one of the beautiful aspects of inner healing. It accelerates the growth process. But this is an expectation of God. Right. He's given us the kingdom. Yeah. And he's saying it's measured out, mm -hmm. just like authority is measured out and power is measured out. As you grow, you should naturally get more. If you're faithful in little things, he gives you bigger things. Yes. Okay, and there's nothing bigger than the kingdom. So look at Galatians 4, 1 through 7. So it talks about this idea of heirship, of being an heir, okay? Galatians 4, 1 through 7. <clears throat> what I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, 
although he owns the whole estate. That does, says it all right there. Yes. He, he is subject to guardians and trustees until time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of this world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Mm. Okay. So the kingdom of God is our inheritance. Yes. Both now and in the life to come. The kingdom is here. It's already not yet. It's not in its fullness, but it's already here. And it is growing across the earth because of the increase of his government. There shall be no end, says Isaiah. Okay. And let that mess with your eschatology. But I won't go there. That's a rabbit trail. Pew, shoot that one. <laughs> so inheritance is for mature sons, for it is written that it's, it is sons who are led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The expectation is children don't always do what you tell them to do. They must be formed. They must be proved over time until on their own, voluntarily, they do the right things without you staring over their shoulder, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's mm -hmm. the desire of every parent, I think. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> So when Jesus spoke about salvation, he always had the bullseye in mind. He always had the kingdom in mind, not just being born again. From the beginning, God made our first introduction into the idea of salvation point to the kingdom of God. Okay, that's again John chapter 3, our introduction to being born again points to the kingdom. Yes. He said, in other words, to see it, you must be born again. To enter it, you must be born again. That subject there and the emphasis on that John 3 scripture is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. This is why the gospel was never a gospel of salvation, but a gospel of the kingdom. And we've talked about that before, but there may be some of you who have never heard me say that. But let's take a look at the message that we preach and compare it to the message that Jesus and the disciples preached. And I'll do it this way. How many times in the entirety of the New Testament does it, do we see the words or the subject matter born again? How many times? The word born again. Yes. Written in... The scriptures, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. In the entire New Testament. Take mm -hmm. a look at the whole New Testament. The answer to that is you see it two times in one place, which we just talked about, John chapter 3. So John two times. Three. Okay. How many times do you suppose in the entire New Testament the word church or ecclesia in the Greek, ecclesia, maybe a better way to say it. How many times in the entire New Testament do we see that word? I know, but <laughs> maybe some of you don't. <laughs> three times. So in the entire New Testament we have born again, and church. Mm -hmm. In other words, the message is get saved mm -hmm. and go to church. Well, right? And everybody can relate to that, okay? Mm -hmm. Right? We'll just we'll stay in agreement for a second, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you two more questions. How many times do you suppose Jesus said directly or indirectly, follow me? Now, if you haven't seen the chosen yet, when he chooses his disciples and he says, follow me, you'll get a really good understanding. So I highly recommend the chosen go on YouTube and you can get the first season for free. How many times? The answer to that is 69 times. It is said, follow me, or it's directly implied that that's what, what's being asked of us. I think that's one of his favorite words, follow me. Yes. Yeah. And then there's another one. This Matthew, son of Alphaeus. Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> yeah. Love that series. Yes. All right, and then finally, how many times do you suppose in the entire New Testament the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, which are ex interchangeable terms, mm -hmm. how many times is it said? A lot, like 100 times, 103 times. So let me put this together for you. Our message in the West especially has been you need to get born again and mm -hmm. you need to go to church. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pretty much. So we're not messing with that. Okay. But let's look at Jesus' message. It was repent. Follow me to the kingdom of God. Follow me to the kingdom of heaven. You see the difference. Mm. It's not that we shouldn't be born again and go to church. Please, if you're not born again, receive Jesus Christ. Make him Lord of your life, and you will never be the same. And then get in a church where you can learn and grow about this new life. But Jesus' message was, follow me to the kingdom. Mm. So there's a big difference there that we need to go. And that's what we call a paradigm shift. It's not design, denying previously understood truth, but it's not staying stuck there. It's allowing 
the paradigm that Jesus had himself when he wrote the scriptures for us mm-hmm. to be able to see through that new paradigm and see things we've never seen before. Um, you know, uh, in the evangelical circles where evangelism is king, if you, their paradigm uh, with the, uh, where Jesus said, um, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, they understood what that verse meant. They would read that verse and go, yes, and go preach the gospel and say, Jesus is the only way to heaven. It's the only way to go. But if you, put a different set of kingdom set of glasses on, and you kind of realize that, yeah, I didn't finish the sentence correctly. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. That our destination in this verse that Jesus was talking about was not a place, but a person. It was Father. He was here to show us what the Father is like. Amen? So now that we see that the kingdom of God is distinct from being born again, what does walking in the kingdom and, and, or our inheritance look like? Amen. Let's take a look. Wow. It's called the journey of discovery. Oh, wow. Remember that? Yes, the journey <laughs> of discovery. Well, I have to tell you, I did some work not too long ago, actually, just a few hours ago, with someone who ended up into a memory of her father and in that memory in that recollection she somehow listened to her father's words that were quite negative towards her and she perceived my daddy didn't want me she perceived he didn't want me to be born I shouldn't be here And these belief system as a young child, I'm talking about probably four or five years old, hearing something from her father who, remember, he is the authority on earth that represents God, right, in her life. He has been given that that work to, to love, to cherish, to secure, to establish. And in her heart, in her mind, Everything was crushed. She, not only did she, did she receive a lot of pain hearing a father who did not want her. Mm-hmm. She, he didn't want her to be born. Um, but what it did, it warped her whole life, warped her belief about herself, warped her value, her, her worth, and also uh, gave her a sense that she didn't have a father. And when we did the work and the Holy Spirit showed up and started speaking to her, he literally met in her heart in that place where that little child believed, my father doesn't want me. I shouldn't be born. I'm not worth loving. Well, the Holy Spirit comes in and says to her, I wanted you. I created you. I'm your father. (laughs) And everything in... A flash of a second, God transformed in her heart. Okay, I could have counseled her into her head and told her, but you know God loves you and he wanted you. And But in, in, a, in a moment of an encounter with the Holy Spirit, she received this truth for herself deep inside her heart and every, everything was changed. Not only that, but I saw the kingdom coming to her. Because... She was already born again. She has been living the life of a Christian, but she was stuck in that place where she could not understand that God wanted her. She couldn't understand her value in the eyes of God, through the eyes of God. And she could not receive the kingdom and God as father. And I do believe that one cannot enter into the kingdom without being born again. That is you know, that's a given, right? But one cannot walk in the fullness of the kingdom if you do not know him as a good father. Amen. If you do not know his character, if you do not know he loves you, if you have not had encounter with the love of God that transforms your heart, then you are a believer. Yes, that's that's a done deal. But you are not able to have your way in the kingdom and receive your inheritance Mm -hmm. because inheritance is given by the king who is your father. So I'm just addressing a few people here. Um, I want, I want to ask you that question. Are you walking with God or 
trying so hard to perform for him? Are you, are you really striving, doing a lot of things for him? Doing, 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 doing for him a lot. Are you not convinced of his love yet? Have you noticed that your heart is an anxiety? It's, there's a little needle in your heart that with, with some free floating fear and doubts. Um, and, and there's just not much of the kingdom in your heart. Remember the kingdom being righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Where if you're noticing that you're lacking this and that you're not relating to him as a father so much, maybe with Jesus you're okay and the Holy <laughs> Spirit's good, but maybe there's something for, for you to look at because the kingdom comes with you not only being born again, but becoming a son and a daughter that returns to the father and says, my father treats his servants well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somehow, some of us, you know, I'm not saying we're not believers, but maybe you need, you need that relationship. Maybe you haven't come to him saying, I need to have that relationship with you. I need to have that kind of relationship with you. And you can be sure that the enemy understands this. Oh, yeah. He attacks Christians. He puts lies. He breaks your heart so that you won't grow and mature and mm -hmm. then receive more of the kingdom because that's what he's terrified of. And because the kingdom, is again, is the domain, the reign of God. Yes. So the work that I was doing with this particular woman was really undoing her orphan heart orphan spirit, which to me, it's not really a spirit. It's, or it is, it is more of a hole, a very big hole, a very big void in one's heart where the father is, is not, his love has not been poured in. And again, it's not about believing or not believing in Jesus Christ and being saved, but it is a place that's an empty place where people do not feel like they are a son or a daughter in father's house. They have not found that place in God's heart yet, and they haven't received his love. Somehow it's been held back. It's been mistrusted. It's been doubted. There's been doubts and unbelief about how much he loves me, right? That type of thing. So maybe some of you are, are feeling this right now. The Holy Spirit is highlighting this. He's putting his finger, his highlight, his Holy Spirit highlight right now on your heart. And I want to say to you, he's ministering to you. He's wooing you mm. into his agape. He's wooing you into his perfect, unconditional love. And he's saying, you've performed a lot. You've done a lot. You have worked hard at pleasing me. But I've always loved you. Mm -hmm. And I will always love you. And I'm touching your heart right now. And some of you are feeling it. And mm -hmm. just let him minister to you and respond by saying, yes, I want to be my father's child. Mm -hmm. I want you as my father. <coughs> I've looked to my earthly daddy and how he missed it, how messed up he was and how he didn't give me what I really longed for. But now I turn my affections towards you. As my father, I turn my whole heart towards you for you to fill. Only you will fill that void in my heart. <clears throat> That's right, because only God as a father can give you identity, Amen. purpose, reasons for why you're here. Mm -hmm. Security. Security. Belonging. Mm -hmm. That comes from a father, your father in heaven. And that's the gospel of the kingdom. I'm doing it from a more theological point of view mm -hmm. and her from a more practical, relational, yeah. relational inner healing view. But they're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Purpose and destiny and identity come from knowing God as father. Mm -hmm. That's why we must have a kingdom gospel, gospel of the kingdom. When it's the gospel of the church, then it's, then it's born again and go to church and depending on what kind of church you go to, there's not a lot of uh, identity built in in who you are. Mm -hmm. And what literally happens to people is they they get stuck between born again and heaven and not 
ever sure what what are we doing here? They're stranded, huh? Kind of <laughs> stranded, stranded. And relationally. Yeah. Uh, they're stranded. They don't quite understand mm-hmm. where is the church's role in all of this. What mm-hmm. what? How does the church and the kingdom relate? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, important stuff. Important stuff. Yes. Well. Well, I'll, I'll, let me just and I'll finish with this. Um, I have a little chart here that you can't see, mm. but when generally speaking, mankind fell into sin, there was three things that God did for them. Okay, so we always start out in this growth process Mm. so that we can mature and become sons and daughters with God. We always start out with what God does for us because we need some things for him to do for us once we're born again, right? Amen. Uh, One of the first things is is the gift of repentance. Yes. That is a gift from God. It must Mm. be initiated by God for it to be actually repentance, Mm -hmm. okay? This is something we see in inner healing, Mm -hmm. right? They're believing a lie. We find out where that lie was planted and what happened. And Jesus comes into that place and brings truth. And so now they're presented with a lie, the discovery of this is what I believe. Here's Jesus bringing me truth. And they push away from the lie, turn away from the lie, and they embrace the truth. That's repentance initiated by God. If God doesn't show them the lie, what they're believing, and and then bring them truth, there's no repentance that can Mm -hmm. take place because it will be just man's effort. Mm -hmm. And often our understanding of repentance is, you know, we'll have preachers and fellow Christians go, you need to repent, you need to repent, you need to repent. Often what they're referring to is your behavior. Mm. Okay? Repentance is first a matter of the heart, Mm -hmm. and then the behavior comes as fruit of true repentance. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.25, Paul says, gently instruct those in the hope that God will grant them repentance. Mm -hmm. So that's something that God does for you. Another thing that he's given us for us is water baptism. Okay, That is the burial of the old man and all the sins of the flesh buried and put away because the old man is dead. Amen. And then finally is the encounter or the baptism in the Holy Spirit. God gives us gives the fullness the of his mm-hmm. spirit. So these are things that God does for us. Amen. But if we live there and we only relate to God on the basis of what he can do for me, that is a child's relationship with the father. It's not an adult relationship because we must move from selfishness to selflessness. And it's not selfish receiving what God has given, but it can become selfish as we stay there Mm -hmm. and constantly seeking what God can do for us Mm -hmm. because he can do things for us, but he wants us to be be moving beyond that. And where the kingdom begins really is after those three things where God does things in us Mm -hmm. and through us, Mm -hmm. okay? This is the part where inner healing is a central concept. Sanctification. Of sanctification of the kingdom of God, of growing and maturing into sons and daughters, walking with our Father. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it's first in us. We must allow God to change us from the inside out, which requires our cooperation, Mm -hmm. which requires process, Mm -hmm. which requires Jesus' initiation and Jesus' healing of the heart. That is the purpose Mm -hmm. of inner healing. People come in with marriage problems, drug problems, all these kind of problems, and yeah, this thing is fantastic tool that God has given us to help people with these kinds of problems. But that's not the goal. Mm-hmm. The goal is intimacy with God. The goal is growing in, in a loving rela- love relationship with the Father and us growing and maturing into sons and daughters and, and walking in the kingdom, taking territory for God. And then finally, that's the through us part. Mm-hmm. Okay? I mean, God will work through immaturity. The gifts of God will work through immaturity, but it's designed us for those gifts to work with maturity. Both yes. character and power always go together. They are two sides of the same coin. That's what uh, is the culture of revive, putting the word and the spirit back together. We must have both. Amen. Yeah. I think it points to that scripture that uh, uh, talks about um, the harvest being a 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Right. And I do believe it is the difference between just casting out seeds and just reaping one one apple versus reaping 30, 60, or 100. Um, so I, I do see that the kingdom comes in greater measure to all of those who open their hearts to receiving uh, the freedom God has for them. Um, it, is, it is the following of Christ. It is the going with him, letting him have us, right? Letting him have more of us, letting him 
pour more of himself in us. And there's, mm. there's such a thing as increased, as an increase. The kingdom never ceases to increase. Amen. There's never less. There's always more, more with God. Once you're born again and you start following and you listen for his voice, you recognize his voice, there's always more. And it's really, <laughs> mm, on our end, that it's restricted. It's on my end that I'm yes. hesitant and I resist him. Um, but God wants to give you more. He wants to pour himself more upon you. Let him have your heart and let him do what he wants to do in you so he can work through, through you. you. With Amen. pure living water. Amen. We don't want the waters full of mud and soot. We want clean, pure water, God having it flow out. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, I wanted to just mention something. At the end of our session with the ladies lately, the Lord has put on my heart to when everything is done, peaceful and calm, they have had an encounter with the Lord and the fruit is measurable. They can feel his presence. They can hear his voice. And there's been a, a tremendous encounter that's really transform them by the renewing of their mind, the truth, this calm, so forth and so on. There's so much going on in sessions these days. Well, the Lord has put on my heart to do this in agreement with the person that, who is now lifted up into the kingdom. When your head is in the heavenlies, right? When your head is in the kingdom and you're seeing and perceiving with the eyes of Christ, you're feeling his heart, then there's something wonderful that happens is that prayer of agreement or prayers of declaration calling forth all of the inheritance for that person that has not been picked up. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> I believe some people on this earth have not picked up their inheritance, their blessing, their promises. Things are being held back or laid down or not believed, right? Just simply couldn't believe. Or out of disobedience or distancing, right? Just God distancing. Uh, we talk about distancing these days. Well, we can do that with God. Well, I do believe it will slow one down or even hinder us from receiving that inheritance mm -hmm. and inheritance is conditional it is not done for us as we we just tried to explain earlier um, but it's given to us as we walk into the kingdom and receive more of the kingdom and we allow the kingdom to take place in our hearts right. in our character in our words in our in our declarations in our how we treat each other in our relationships, right? Uh, how we deal with everything in life according to the kingdom, according to the leading of the Spirit of God. Well, then to that degree, we will receive the inheritance of what God wants to give us. Um, so That's right. Am I, am it's I right? progressive, okay. absolutely. You're the teacher. You can correct me. Please do. But what I've seen is God just wanting to do something fantastic at the end of sessions where people are really in belief, right? They are in an encounter with that love and in the kingdom. Then what we do, we proclaim and we call forth the inheritance that where that was laid down, not picked up, even by prior generations, mm -hmm. the blessings, the callings, the talents, the revelations, the visions, the dreams, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The promises that were laid down, even by prior generation, we call forth those things as they should be and to be received in that person's life. This is what I've, I've been led to do. Um, as the person's heart is free to receive, then I see it, and then I know that they will taste of it, they will see the fruit, the fruit of it, the tangible fruit in their life. And um, I'm just excited yeah. because there's a lot to be picked up in the kingdom. Well, I think our time is up. Think so? Pretty close. Yeah, we're getting there. We hope that, you know, there were some words right there that just hit home and that 
address something in your life because I believe, we believe God wanted to talk to you. He speaks to you and he had something to say to you. Maybe he highlighted something that Pastor Kimo said or I said, and oblivious, sometimes I'm oblivious to what I'm saying, but we believe that God wants to speak to you. He wants to lead you into more freedom. He wants to grow you and he wants to bring you to a place of more of his kingdom right here on Amen. earth, right here on earth. So Lord, we bless everyone who was tuned to our little uh, conversation today, a little teaching, and we ask you to reveal yourself to them. Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. and revelation in the knowledge of you. Meet them in their day. Let your goodness pass before them. Thank you, Jesus. Also, remember, there's no lone rangers in the body of Christ. If you're going through something and it's really triggered you, if you will, and it's got your emotions wrenched, come and see us. This is what we do. This is what God has called us to do. We are not. Uh, we are called to be interdependent upon each other. We need each other. God's choice and m mode of all ministry is through people, the body of Christ, ministering to the body, ministering to the lost as they come in. And so this is what we do. We've been doing this for 18, 19 years. So if you got issues and you, you want prayer and the enemy's got a hold of you and he's pulling you around and you want it to stop, the Lord knows what the source and origin of that is and it will be dug out of your life. So don't let fear of the unknown scare you, okay? We've heard it all. We've seen it all over all these years. We've had so many stories, but they always end as people pers pursue God. Mm -hmm. They end in victory. They end in becoming a testimony for the goodness and the kindness of God. Amen. So contact us um, through, through Revive. the church. Uh, www.reviveusnow.com is the church mm -hmm. website. And if you know us personally, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you can also just private message us or just leave a little comment. We can look it up and contact you if we haven't met you. Um, but this is what we do. This is our ministry. We do this full time every day of the week. Um, and we're pleased and honored to be used in the body of Christ this way. Right. And if you're, if you're too far from Revive, this thing called Zoom <laughs> is a great tool. We can actually do sessions with you using Zoom. 